Good evening. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show, live from Xfinity Center, Maryland. 73, the Rhode Island Rams, 55. Yes, the score is behind us up on the scoreboard. Bruce. Wait a minute. Uh, you said that, and it rang a little bell in my ear. What? Somebody else scored 73 today. Somebody else did, but I don't <laughs> really feel like talking things. about that right now. Uh, I'm hey. still mad about that. And Rick, I probably will be for a while. Well, it's old news. We've got a W. You end the night in a good way. Uh, it's a good test for our terms. You got you got to Rhode Island credit. They came out smoking, and that big guy double zero was really playing tough on sticks. Harris, they, absolutely. They started fights with us. They did everything they could, but uh, by the time the game ended, you said to me afterwards that you know the bench warmed down, that depth warmed down. Early on, it was uh, Air Gaiala and Aaron Wiggins, and uh, they you know we were down 12 points in that first half. They clawed back to have a lead at three. Second half, first half, Anthony Cowan was, was scoreless. He had 14 points in the second half. That's he an could, unusual way. No, he, he starts slowly. There's starts games slowly. where he starts out one of seven, two of eight. The zero was a little bit much, but they yeah, made some made adjustments. That. Turgeon, you can see, pushed the ball inside in the second half. That made the difference. They held uh, Rhode Island just about 20 points in the entire second well, half. Well, he moved to the zone when they were down by 12. And it really frustrated Rhode Island. And I think it it turned the game. Not that, it, you know. And we were in foul trouble at the time. 24 to 12, were you worried? A little bit. Yeah. I, I've seen games where we've had a battle all the way to the end, but this wasn't a game that Rhode Island could sustain their level. As you said, they came out on fire. It's hard to stay up there when you get into foul trouble. And then Sticks had seven points with uh, I don't know, 10 minutes to go, and he ends up with a clear double-double. They couldn't stop him at the end. I do have to give Rhode Island credit. Langevin had 16 rebounds to keep Rhode Island in that. They didn't have the size to compete with the Terps. And, and the game it, turned when Harris went out right. at the beginning of the second half with his fourth foul, and they just didn't have the bulk inside. And Maryland's depth really, really, really and helped Maryland the Maryland played better small than big. And I thought against Rhode Island, when you start one of the Mitchells, at center, you move sticks to power forward, and you start big, that they were going to be able to exert their will. But that wasn't what happened. What happened was when Maryland went small, suddenly Rhode Island couldn't keep up with them. And that three-guard lineup, or four-guard lineup, plus sticks, played fairly well and really stretched the lead at the end. But look, overall, Maryland's supposed to win these games, and they're supposed to win them by 20 points. Well, you're number three, seven 55. in the country preseason. Yeah. You figure out a way to win this game, and Turgeon did, and that's the bottom line. And they did it with toughness. You know, I, I was impressed with the toughness of Wiggins, with Ayala, and Daryl Morsell. Morsell's such a glue guy for this team. He's so important. He's always making the big rebound. He's making, taking the, the tough defender, and he just does a great he job. Too many turnovers tonight for Daryl, but we uh, had three walks early on and in the first couple turnovers minutes. Turnovers in the first couple minutes. We will be back to take a look at that score sheet and talk about what's next for the Maryland Terrapins here on the Big Dog Post Game Show from Xfinity Center. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklitz Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. CAG Federal brings a combination of military operational and commercial business experience to your organization. We mix extraordinary organizational management experience with strong leadership skills to provide your department with the best chance for success. When 99.9% .9 reliability isn't good enough, call CAG Federal at 877-797-8776 or on the web at cagfederal.com. Back at Xfinity Center, yeah, Maryland basketball gets 73, Maryland football gives up 73. It's a sort of balanced day. One odd thing about today, we had the alumni pep band in the house because the band went to Columbus with the football team. Mm. So you don't get to see them very much. No, no, no. You can't tell the difference. They still got it. Yeah, the band still plays. They still can rock. So Wiggins has a pretty good floor game, gets 13 points, 12 boards four assists. Look at that. Four for 12. That's like Iverson numbers. 
<laughs> right or wrong, but he always winds up with the right number of Four, points. Look, he, uh, Cowan gets 14 points, three boards, five assists, and a block shot. You don't get that much from Cowan. Morsell plays his glue game. Smith gets the 19 points, the 11 rebounds, and he gets 18. Um, in 33 minutes, he's a plus 18 for Maryland. The other big plus is Ayala. 13 points, 5 of 10 from the floor, 1 of 4 from 3, 2 of 2 from the line, 3 boards, 2 assists, 31 minutes, and a plus 12. So that's your that's your big terps for today. You got and we four overcame guys. DJ tonight. Oh, Who's DJ? DJ Karsten. Karsten, Karsten in the uh, famed bald-headed referee that we see often in the Big Ten. Boy, his crew called it close. Today? Yes. All I have on uh, my... Twitter is how bad the refereeing was. There was a block shot that Morcel got at the other end with both hands, clean block. He wasn't within three him. feet of the guy, you know. I mean, yes. it was like ridiculous. But look, bottom line is, Terps are 2-0, and oh, number seven in the country, and uh, it's time to move on. It is, so they have Oakland. Oakland, Michigan comes in It seems like Saturday. they've been here before. You know, I see them in the NCAA tournament once in a while, but I don't recall them being here. So you get a week off. You got a game this weekend coming up. So really, all we're looking at is uh, Terp Talk on Wednesday and the Sports Maven. But you do have a Ravensburg game show tomorrow. Yes, and the Ravens, boy, you talk about big news. The news hit yesterday that Lamar Jackson had a cold, and it ran around Baltimore like you can't imagine. I know to the point where he wasn't going to play, and then Harbaugh said he is going to play, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Look, it's the Bengals. The Ravens are supposed to be able to beat the Bengals, but history says that's not so certain. Well, well, the carrot's not playing, though. All right, Andy Dalton has been benched in favor of Ryan Finley. That sounds about right. right. Although I don't really know who Ryan Finley is, but apparently he's a quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. The 0 and 9 Cincinnati Bengals. Look, they're playing for. You know, the funny thing about Maryland football is they don't get more draft picks if they keep losing. Yeah, it's a so, problem. Yeah, it is. In fact, they lose draft picks. Yeah, and today has not been a good day uh, for for watching football. Although Penn State lost, and that sort of warms my well, that, heart. You, according to you, that was like the highlight of the day for you. That's the highlight. Well, if Maryland lost. You know, if Maryland wins, that's the highlight. But the second highlight would be if Penn State loses. Which they so, did. Which they did. How about LSU taking it to Alabama? Very high-scoring game for me. Right. I, I did not expect it to be in the 40s. Uh, Two but, great teams, though. Two great, great teams. Yeah. But let, let's circle back to what Maryland has to do to get better. I'd like to see them play with their size better. They seem to be a little reticent to actually take it to the rim. I want my big guys to force their way in there and try and jam that ball home. Well, it's funny. Somebody gave Jalen a wake-up call, and I'm sure it was Coach Turgeon. And in the second half, I mean, he all he did was make layups. Wound up 7 for 11. Well, he played center. They went small. He plays center. When they go big and he plays the stretch four, one of the things you don't want to see right now is Jalen Smith firing up a three-pointer. That's not a good look. Yeah. And you can see, I don't know if you actually can. Hey, you know what? Hold this for a second. Okay. Let me show you how far the three-point shot is down from the basket. All right. Yeah. Now, right here, it's a heave. He says it's a heave from there. So step up to where the line used to be. Does it feel that much closer? Yes. It feels a ton closer. So it's when... About what, 14, 15 inches? Yeah. Abraham, right. It feels a ton closer. And here, here is the best spot. That's where Wiggins in the corner is going to wind up. Well, I've talked to Maryland shooters, and they said that that difference of about 12 to 14 inches has them constantly thinking, don't step out of bounds. You saw several of Rhode Island players step out of bounds when they went to shoot the three-pointer. And, uh, hey, we have a press conference to catch. So if we get this up in time, remember to watch In the Nest. Sponsored by Science and Kirk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio, Sunday morning. One more thing before we go. Turf Talk, again, will be on at 5 p.m. this Wednesday. Hats off to our guy, no longer the intern, Mason, the voice. All right, the TV voice. Of Jacksonville. Of Jacksonville. Jacksonville University. Dolphins, if you have not seen that video, it is on this YouTube page. So click down and watch about a minute of Mason on ESPN+. Plus. I, I think for all the years that we've done this, Bruce has done this a little longer than I have, uh, it's one of it could be our proudest moment is watching Mason cover Jacksonville on national well, TV. Well, it certainly is my proudest moment, and uh, 
I love it. And I, if I haven't told 100 people, I've told 300 people. Yeah, I walked in the building, and people, <laughs> before I got to talk to them, already knew what what was going on. So thanks, Bruce. Yeah, we have to thank me. I love Mason yeah. and uh, really proud of him. And uh, that's going to do it for today. Good win, good comeback. Doesn't end the day in a nightmare, which a loss would have. Right. All right. But uh, we'll forget about the Ohio State game. Now we got a week off. Uh, football has a week off. So on the 23rd, uh, Maryland hosts Nebraska. They could Nebraska. really beat Nebraska. So I know could, that sounds crazy. It could be a good weekend. George yeah. Mason comes here on Friday night. Maryland hosts Nebraska in football. That way, down the hill a little bit on Saturday. Hopefully we can come out of that with two wins. We're going to win and see what Mark Turgeon has to say about tonight's victory. So for Bruce Posner, this is Wayne Viner. Good evening from Xfinity Center, Maryland 73 and the Rhode Island Rams 55. We could say good morning. <laughs> it's close.